Premier, you recently delayed the vote to decriminalise abortion because of pressure from Conservative MPs. Why are you allowing a minority of Conservative voices to influence the vote on the bodily autonomy of women and their right to be in control of their bodies and individual choices? Um, thank you for the question and I appreciate you asking it. Um, I think it's really important on issues of conscience, which is what that is, uh, to make sure that people feel they've been heard, to make sure people feel they've had a chance to consider all parts of the issue. And I appreciate that there are very strong views on, on this issue. New South Wales is the only state that hasn't taken that step. In fact, in South Australia, they took the step 50 years ago. Uh, Let's just explain uh, for the audience who don't know what the step is. It, it removes your bill, uh, would remove abortion from the New South Wales Crimes Act. So it's regulated as a health issue. That's right. But it, I should say it's not my bill. It's not a government bill. It was actually yep. brought forward by a private member. So a, an independent member brought forward the bill. And when there is an issue like that, um, our parties allow what's called a conscience vote. It doesn't happen very often, but it means that every member of parliament can vote according to their conscience or according to what their community feels, as opposed to what the party feels. So it's a free vote, in other words. And again, it doesn't happen very often. But, but and, there are members of your party, the right wing, are blaming you for allowing it to actually well, happen. So that? That, that's why they say it's your bill, in a sense. Have you, have you actually sort of shaken a hornet's nest here? Because... Um, you know, there are some who are saying this could cost you your premiership. Well, I say to everybody, um, you know, in, in, when you're a member of parliament, you have to stand up and, and, and do what you believe is right. And I feel that everybody can consider, look into their own conscience, can consider what their community, their electorate thinks, and then vote accordingly. And, and again, it's, it's a rare opportunity to do that. And I've encouraged all of my colleagues to take that opportunity. And some felt we needed a bit more time and, and I listened and I agreed. And I think uh, it's appropriate for us to, to bring everybody together. We want, a, we want a society that is actually brought together and not divided by issues like this. Because uh, Yes, I'm just going to bring you to the yeah. question. I mean, is your leadership under threat if you push it too hard? No, I believe this is an issue which has the potential to find enormous common ground. And when you listen to the speeches that people gave, if you listen to the attitudes that people had, there was so much common ground there. And I think we need to be respectful to know that for some issues like that, it's very deeply personal and uh, we have to give people the opportunity to express themselves and have time to consider their views. But you are determined to have the vote. Well, the bill, it's the private member's bill and there's a process in place and, and yeah. that, has to, that has to come to its conclusion. OK, Aurora, what do you think about the politics of this? It's interesting how it's emerged. A lot of people, a lot of women actually wouldn't have even known uh, that abortion was in the Crimes Act in New South Wales. Um, I mean, as a legal studies student, I am aware that it is in the Crimes Act of New South Wales. And for me, it comes down to it's my body, it's my choice. Really, I, I get that, you know, there is two sides to the story. You know, abortion for some is not, not what they want and abortion for others is necessary. And, you know, I respect everyone's opinions on that and I respect, you know, having to give people time to go over those opinions as such. But... For me, at the end of the day, it comes down to it's not you getting the abortion, it's some woman getting the abortion. It's my body, it's my choice, it's my idea of what I want to do with my future. And I think that really is something that's being carried on through a lot of young women today. You can see with the protests that happen outside of the New South Wales Parliament with this bill coming into play, it is so important that we listen to young people and realise that my body is my choice. OK, not everyone has the same view. I've got a question from someone who doesn't. Uh, Danielle Safi. <clears throat> I was once a 20-week-old fetus in my mother's womb. 20 weeks old. Had my mother made the heart-wrenching decision to terminate my pregnancy, I would not be here talking to you today. I deeply respect the rights of women, especially over their bodies. However, the life in the womb is another person with dreams and aspirations of their own. Mm. When will hearts and minds change so that we might, as a community, recognise the rights of these little ones to live? Uh, Willoughby, I saw you nodding there, so I'll come to you first. Thank you for your question, Danielle. And we need to remember um, that the issue of abortion is one that is extremely sensitive um, and it's an important decision that is before the New South Wales government. Um, in terms of going to your question, um, yes, um, it is... A serious issue and um, we need to remember as well that 20 odd thousand people protested against this bill um, in the streets of the Sydney CBD and we've seen similar numbers um, in Melbourne as well so there um, this is a big wake-up call to actually say that there are large amounts of people um, who are against um, this bill um, 
And I think that people do need to recognise that that life, that that baby, that fetus is a baby and it is a life and it has just as many rights mm. as someone who is out of the womb. It has just as many rights um, and that is something that we truly need um, to honour as a society, um, to be a compassionate society and one that values um, the sanctity of life. Vasha. Um, so I believe that but if we don't decriminalise this, all we're going to see is just rising postpartum depression, rising child neg negligence. Because if women do not have the autonomy, if we do not have the authority, if we don't have the responsibility and just the liberation to make our own choice, because like Aurora said, it's our body, our choice. It's my body, it's my choice. I, I should have the right to do what I want. Um, women have been oppressed for centuries. And I don't think that this, I think that passing this bill, allowing us to decriminal, decriminalize the act, gives us that autonomy. And I think we need that because I do agree that life is beautiful and that like life is so precious to us. But I also think if the child does not, if the child does not have a good quality of life, then I, I really don't know if, if that's worth it. Mm. Uh, Christina, I'll come to you first. I mean, you're a, a strong Catholic and I'd mm. just like to get your opinion on this. I know you've um, had a position for a long time mm. about abortion, but what do you think about the, the bill here, uh, the decriminalisation? Mm. Abortion obviously has been going on in yeah. New South Wales for a very long time and people aren't going to jail for it. No. Um, so um, the decriminalisation bill, doesn't that just recognise something mm. that's already happening? At one level, you're right, Tony. It does recognise a reality that's already occurring. And, and when I was Premier 10 years ago, there wouldn't have been the numbers in the Parliament to pass this legislation nonetheless, but it does recognise what's already happening. I want to say to Danielle, you know, I, I had a stillborn baby at 20 weeks, Caroline. I held her. I buried her. Uh, she's part of my family. I have photos of her at home. But I have to say, uh, I have always believed that abortion should be safe, it should be legal, and it should be rare. I would like to see a society where all of us have access to effective and inexpensive, reliable birth control. But I also recognise that that life is messy, it's not always straightforward, it doesn't always go as we plan, and that that option of a medical service and of a decision that should be made between a woman and her doctor should be available. What I would say to Will is while I, I have a lot of sympathy with your mm. view about the sanctity of life and life before birth, mm. I don't think it's as simple as saying that there is a point in the process where the person has the absolute same equal rights, uh, the, the baby mm. in the womb, as mm. a person outside the womb. Mm. Now for me personally, I would say that comes you know, after about the point of viability. But the point of viability keeps moving early and earlier in pregnancy. And it's going to challenge us legally and ethically as a society when, as it does. But the reality is this is a complex matter. It is not something we can deal with simply or with absolutes. You know, I don't agree with all pro-lifers that all that life has complete and utter human rights from the point of conception to the point of birth. Nor do I agree with all pro-choicers that it has no rights at all. I think this legislation recognises a reality that's happening in New South Wales, that abortion is a choice that some people do need to have available to them, and it's taking out the criminal aspect of it. And I've already written to the Premier to express to her my support for it. Uh, I'm not too upset that she's delayed it, I have to say. I think there's some complexities about this legislation, that the upper house needs the time to do the job that an upper house does. You know, one I would point out, as I, I've pointed out to the Premier in my letter, is that the way we collect data in this state uh, doesn't allow us to distinguish between miscarriage, stillbirth and abortion. And this is an opportunity by decriminalising it to change that so that we could actually get some good data about what's happening in women's lives medically. And that would be really useful. Okay. Um,